Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's select board meeting. <laughs> this is my third meeting in three nights, so I'm ready. All practiced up. So we'll get started with our consent agenda. Um, for a consent agenda, uh, we have the minutes from the 24th of February. Um, we need to sign the annual election warrant and appointment of Paul Tacey to the alternate building inspector. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so congratulations to the alternate building inspector. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, so then we have a guest here, Mr. Devine. We do. Dylan Phil's here today. And Dylan, you're here because of Boy Scouts? Yep. You're, you're attending our meeting tonight and taking notes and understanding how town meetings work. Is that what you're all about tonight? Yeah. All right, well, we just wanted to welcome you and thank you for coming. And Hopefully you can bring some information back to the scouts and let them know how these things go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so public comment. Do we have anybody for public comment tonight? Dylan, would you like to make a public comment? <laughs> <laughs> you're, so, a, you're a true 550 out of Hadley, correct? Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't actually mind if you don't if you don't really mind. What what are you? What level of scout are you? First class. First class. We're all scouts up here. Well, most of us were. I'm not sure how the. I was a girl scout. Girl scouts in Molly. Yeah, I ran the Cub Scout trip with my husband for years. So you got a, a lot of support up here, Dylan. And so, what are you actually doing tonight? You're you're here to just kind of witness a meeting. Yeah. And it's for a badge. Uh, yeah, communication merit badge. It's one of the requirements. Excellent. Well, thanks again for joining us. Are you working towards your Eagle Scout? Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, so we'll let Dylan alone for a while. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the administrative assistant in the licensing coordinator position. Mr. Nixon. So this one, unfortunately, is Ms. Rodriguez's uh, final meeting with the select board. Ah. <laughs> Make it a short one. No. <laughs> I've, I've talked to uh, the mayor of Northampton and the finance director uh, Susan Wright, uh, and uh, they're very they're very keen on having you come over and helping them out. And I gave a good plug for you, uh, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, she is going to leave. Friday is her last day, and uh, we uh, we need to f uh, think about a replacement. Okay, so we talked last time about getting a job the job description out so we can look it over and some temp there might be some temporary. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me talk a little bit about the temporary uh, uh, employee situation. Uh, there is a uh, state bid, uh, Johnson & Hill is a subsidiary uh, co contractor for the state bid. Uh, they would offer somebody to uh, work for $15 an hour with a 41% uh, markup, so that's twenty-one fifteen per hour. So they would handle all the insurance, all the benefits, all the all the uh, other issues that we normally would handle with a, an employee, and we would be paying uh, that set rate. Uh, they could get somebody in on a part-time basis or a full-time basis. Uh, we have an opportunity to, uh, to interview who we would like to have uh, and go uh, forward with that. Ms. Rodrigue has some vacation time accumulated. We'll have to uh, pay that. Uh, and we can employ Janice Kangas, who we fund at 10 hours a week anyways, uh, to support the, the office. So that's one opportunity to give us an opportunity to uh, think about the position and think about any kind of changes that you may want to see done to the position. Or we can go out and advertise with the job description that we have right now. Any discussion? Okay. Worked pretty good the last time. So? Yeah, I mean, I've got some, some go ahead. Um I like the idea of buying a little bit of time. I think that we have just the way that we're structured in town hall right now, um, we have some departments that seem to be having to work um, a lot, of, a lot of extra hours to get the job done. Um, we have a couple of people who are, you know, we've got Dee Dee that's floating, helping out with accounting and, and inspections. Janice is moving around. 
and just to try to figure out, um, you know, get, get a, a little bit better sense of workload, what the impact would be with uh, upgrading our information technology, and maybe give David a chance to think about, I think we all know that David um, doesn't have enough hours in the day to do everything that everybody wants him to do when they want him to do it. Is that a fair way to put it? That's very fair. Okay. Um, I'm thinking like the procurement process and some things that seem to take a fair amount of time. So maybe it would just buy us some time to rethink the skill sets for the position and the hours and how that aligns with the other departments in town hall. I'm in agreement with that. Yeah, I kind of like that too. I mean, for two reasons. One, it gives us a chance to actually look and see what we need to do internally. But if we actually do change around the job description, you give us more time to talk about it and get it out in the public, let people know what's going on, and then this is a better chance of getting a, a candidate, which is more what we're looking for. So I would, I would propose that we go ahead and do the temporary for, well, do we want to say for a set number of weeks or months? Janice well, works 10 hours a week total or 10 hours for the select board? She works uh, 20 hours a week total and we fund 10 of those through the select board. Up. I think she also works for the assessor's office and the town clerk. I would want to see this go for too long because I don't think that he can manage the phones all the time. 10 hours isn't enough to manage our meetings, our, our minutes, our uh, everything else that goes on in that office with licensing and stuff. I mean, it's not. No, we'd be getting a tip. Yeah, we get a tip yeah. for and, and so Janice would do like the, um, the if you need to be in the know part of it, you know, like you're not going to yeah. pick up at it right away. Janice would be more likely to be able to, to fill in and then. Because it is a try. very busy position. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and I don't see how, how it's going to differ with what's going on on the outer aspect. Just this job alone. Mm -hmm entails a lot to do without thinking about what's happening in, in the other offices. Yes. But then the question, I don't think it should be a share thing at all. But then again, the question is whether or not the new person who replaces Bridget does more of the stuff that David does to give David some help too. Because right now, the way it's written, there's not that going on as much. I mean, that might be the biggest change we make is that there's more sharing of duties so as that, long that, as it's not outsourcing it to other departments, it stays within no, the, no, that no, department no, itself. No. But yeah. I think Janice, yeah. okay. Janice would have to her 10 hours, right? Did I get the name right? Yes. I apologize to everybody because names is my worst thing. Um, so it, it is. I can't remember my kid's name. <laughs> um, so Janice would do her time and maybe we might think about maybe some more time for her just for answering the phones so phone part mm -hmm. in the transition and the transit yeah mm -hmm. and then 20 hours at least for the consultant to come in start with 20 hours to see and, and then go from there and that might be how we, we do it mm -hmm. knowing that we might do it for well do we want to just do it until the end of the year or yeah i was thinking maybe just kind of tentatively the until the end of the end of the fiscal year oh, uh, unless Unless there are compelling reasons to, I mean, if it's not working out, I think we should afford David the opportunity to say, this really isn't working, right. you know, and, and shorten it. I think the, the, the two big projects that uh, uh, Ms. Rodriguez uh, typically handles at this time of the year is the producing of the annual report mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, uh, the reappointments for all the committees and positions. Uh, so uh, those are two large tasks that we need to make sure that we that we do in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. uh, so th those are big. Uh, right, the annual report, I'm, I currently haven't received everyone's, so I started to format, but I think it would be kind of hard for somebody to come into and pick up on where I'm leaving off because I started to put it all together. Mm -hmm. um, so I had said to David, I, I didn't mind coming in to finish that. I'm just waiting for some um, departments to turn in their report. Okay, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then David doesn't have to do it. Well, Joyce, I have to agree with you. Oh, and God, I think no. we should wait. <laughs> we should put it out right now, get some applicants, and start some interviews. Okay. So we have. We need to expand on it later. We need to expand on it later. But once you have somebody hired, John, then. I mean, it's you're making a commitment to that individual. You don't want to turn around three months later and say, sorry, we, we rethought the position that we want. You know, we want you to do this, and we realize now you're not 
you know, qualified to do that. That wouldn't be fair to a person. So case in point, I think, is if we're talking about a new IT program, somebody that, if we brought somebody in with a real strong IT background, Everybody's got to learn it when it comes in the door. We had to learn when we got board docs. Okay. It's going to be new to whoever it is. All right. So any more discussion about this? So is there anybody who wants to propose a motion to how we proceed? I'll make a motion that we um, move forward with authorizing David to utilize Johnson and Hill temporary services for purposes of filling um, Bridget's position and uh, tentatively through the end of the fiscal year. Second. Okay. Now we is there any more discussion? End of fiscal year, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the only other thing I would say is, is we do want to see how this all pans out in the money situation. So right. when right. you start pulling this together, we need to the see numbers. Absolutely. The numbers. So you don't know how much it's going to cost us? We do. 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 We have to pay out Bridget's vacation time. Right. We get to. I don't think you should say it like that. The poor girl's right here. We get to pay her. <laughs> <laughs> we have the good fortune. To pay we have the good, yeah. Enjoy it. So yes. I, I did put some numbers together. Uh, I think we can carry this to the end of the fiscal year and still remain within budget. Uh, just to, depends on how fast we get somebody in and, and uh, uh, what, at what rate. Okay. All right. So any more discussion? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. no. You don't always have to be in agreement. No. I mean, I, mean I, I, I agree with some of what you have and, and what to do, but I also think that, you know, the position needed to be filled with a more permanent person. But okay. I live with it. Okay. So it's still not quite 7 to 15. <clears throat> So let's new business number one. We have the WM Schultz payment request number 18 and change order number seven. And this is last and final, or no? This is last and final. So the change order is a balancing change order. We had $20,000 set aside in the budget for, um, for uh, the electrical work. And it turns out we don't need that entire amount. Uh, uh, so there's a change order that would give us a credit of about 8,200. Dollars, uh, and then the requisition would be the final payment. Uh, our DPW director looked through the punch list. Everything is all resolved to his satisfaction, and so we can bring this project in for a conclusion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? John, you got anything to say to that? Uh, no. It's the all everything's taken care. The engineer signed off. The engineer was concerned about the electrical. Excellent. Uh, and the electrical that is still a little messed up is warranty stuff through Gorman Rub through the pump company. So no more drips and no. I guess everything is running pretty well. There's a few little, few little things we need to attend to, but, but all part yeah. of the punch list and take care. Most of the second on the floor chair. Any more discussion over there? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Upstate. All right. So I want to do one more thing before we get into the other stuff. So we have a request for a pilot for UMass on their new solar projects. Mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about this last meeting, and now we have more information. Right. So uh, the uh, uh, an outfit by the name of Brighter G is installing a. a 2.179 megawatt uh, facility at the University of Massachusetts uh, in three locations on Hadley soil, a half of the Champion Center roof, the lot 25, which is the parking lot north of the Mullins Center, and the roof of the PBTA uh, bus garage. Uh, they, uh, they have an option under Mass General Law to uh, uh, ask for a payment in lieu of taxes instead of tax straight taxation. Uh, we negotiated an agreement for $10,000 per megawatt uh, for the first year with a 2% uh, escalator uh, for the next 20 years. Uh, if we uh, go with the pilot payment, we'll actually end up with more uh, money.
money coming to the town than we would under a straight taxation uh, uh, plan. So the, the difference is $17,000 extra to the town through the pilot payment over the 20 year period rather than taxation. This money, uh, the first payment of $21,000 would be added to our new growth for whichever year the uh, facility goes live, either FY17 or FY18. Right. So my recommendation and the recommendation of the assessors is to sign the uh, pilot agreement. The pilot agreement has been uh, reviewed by council and all issues have been uh, resolved. We're not receiving taxes on that now, are we? No, this would be taxable this will be a taxable as a UMass location though right. we're not currently I mean you're it's not this is all it, that. it's better taxes because we're not getting any there now right right yeah so, so I'm, we'll, I'm a home run from can we get more, uh, more no so more more solar panels up not more for the contract more solar panels on UMass property uh, we will certainly pursue that uh, hopefully we get an aerobic digester there that would be a real home run both in terms of our operational costs and our taxation. Oh, there's there's digester. no digester. The digester. There's no digester coming? No. 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 Make a motion we sign. Okay, is there a second? Yes. Sorry, I made a motion I'll sign. No, I'm sorry. I well, we motion, second choices. Second. <laughs> okay. Um just for information, we had uh, our intern from UMass putting together the renewable energy sites in in Massachusetts. And for, and for Hadley here, we now have 19,718 kilowatts of renewable energy generated in the, in the town. Are we ever going to be able to offer this to um, citizens? Funny you should ask. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing. Let's go for it. <laughs> that, is your, that, is your seven, that is your 7.30 appointment. Okay. Yes. Super. So I hope, yeah, it'll be in at 7.30. So just, just so you know, to the west of us, that community has 8,036 kilowatts. And to the east of us, that community has 4,430 kilowatts. How much do we have? We have 19,718. 19, From all sources, PV. From all sources. So, uh, combined heat and power, uh, anaerobic digester. So we're like the center of Hampshire County's renewable energy pocket right now, which is kind of cool. And it is. And the land and uh, preserve. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so in the state. In the state. Is Just, there anybody that has? I mean, Northfield's got some big stuff. That are they? Um, Northfield. Let's see. No, Northfield has less than we do. Uh, the big one and the biggest one I saw in here was Florida. So Florida has the wind turbines. They have wind, oh, they have wind turbines, wind, yeah. Right. Yeah, I so think they got 17 wind turbines, turbines up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they generate 28,558 kilowatts. I know I'm to say that differently, but I, I'm not an electrical guy, so I'll just read it later. Did we take a vote on this? No, we haven't, because I was just putting in additional information. So any more additional information we want? Is it that available? Yes, Thank you. No more additional information. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fabulous. Okay, so just just to build on that, well, I think we're number twenty-first in the Commonwealth for renewable energy production per capita. Wow. So and we're gonna have the intern on just on PV only. So we're gonna have the intern actually put that into a chart. Yeah. It's actually a pretty cool little yes. map, but it's hard to read. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our seven fifteen appointment, because it's seven fifteen, is to talk about the uh, budget and the annual town meeting warrant. So Mr. Um, West was supposed to join us tonight, but he is indisposed at the moment, having a uh, family issue, yeah. um, a, a joyful family issue. Did it happen? No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> so where do we want to start with, uh, do we want to well, let's just start with the budget, okay. the select board budget. So would it be helpful if I just walked through the, uh, the, the, the major points of the budget? Please. Okay, so part, starting on page 35, and there is a, an attachment within your uh, board doc's uh, agenda posting. 
Uh, the first uh, budget would be budget 122. That's the select board's uh, budget. Contains two people, uh, the Ms. Rodriguez's position, the administrative assistant, as well as half the clerical position, which we share with the assessors and the town clerk. Uh, uh, the um, office supplies is the uh, one issue that I, uh, one thing that I decreased uh, because of historical trends. Uh, I slightly increased uh, miles and meals uh, reimbursement because of the more activity of the board members with professional meetings and professional development. And the board doc's agenda has increased. Uh, it's a new expense that we incurred this year for $3,000. So the whole budget went up by 2.72%. So is the board docs, that's the annual subscription, right? That's correct. But with all of the paper and the, is that the 500? I mean, it seems like we're going to save an awful lot just on right. copying costs. Right. Um, You're down almost 2,800 bucks though in office supplies. Right? Oh, no. No. David, David no, said he knocked it from 3,500 down right, to three. Right. I do know that I'm buying more paper for my house because I don't have scrap paper to make put my copier, so I take all my agendas and use them in my yeah, flip them over. Okay. So Move we'll right along. The next one is the town administrator's budget, budget 129. Uh, the increase in the salary is a contractual sal uh, increase. Uh, I've reduced the tuition and meetings from 800 to 400 um, because I'm simply not using the opportunities uh, uh, to get as much uh, training as I formerly did. So uh, now that I'm not on the uh, the board of directors for the MMA, I'm not doing as much travel and meeting time as before. Budget 151, which is uh, town council, I increased that by $5,000 in order to uh, take into account the increased legal activity that uh, we expect with the Five Colleges Inc. Uh, lawsuit that was filed against us. Uh, this was something that was advised to the selectmen a few <coughs> months ago. Did we not believe that was going to be over a few years? Right, and so we're looking we're looking at five thousand dollar increase over the next eighteen months. Okay. <coughs> the next budget would be insurance one th one nine three. Uh, I increased it by seven thousand five excuse me five thousand seven hundred dollars in order to take into account historical trends and in insurance increases. Our um, safety committee has been doing a lot of good work uh, to reduce our risk exposure, uh, taking advantage of the Maya Rewards program. We actually got an award in loss control excellence. Uh, this is a budget that will be revealed to us after town meeting. And if you remember last year, we've level funded the budget and then we found out that we were faced with an increase. And so I'm anticipating an increase, even though we're doing good work. Town buildings, operational town buildings. This is not for the repair or maintenance, but they're for the internal operations of the town buildings. Budgets 192 through 199. First one is Senior Center, 192. Uh, the oil I've increased by $1,000 to uh, match the trend. Uh, electricity I've reduced by $1,700, uh, <coughs> again, to match the trend. And that's the only other change that I've made to that budget. Shouldn't the oil be down from last year? We prepaid the oil last year at a higher rate. Don't we anticipate a lower rate this year? We do, and we can reduce that oil. We did not use as much oil this year as we did in previous years, and so we have a surplus. So we'll probably be uh, buying half as much oil uh, as, we, as we did at a lower price. So if you wanted to lower that, uh, you could. Well, we just put a little star next to it. <coughs> Might come back. Sure. Uh, 196 is the town hall budget. Electricity we increased by 300 again to uh, keep uh, up with the trend. 
Uh, we've also seen an increased use of the building for, um, for uh, night meetings, which has increased our electricity costs. Uh, water and sewer went up by $75 in order to uh, take uh, into account past history. The alarm system reduced by $60, again past history. Uh, equipment maintenance reduced by $200, the same with the postage machine servicing, uh, both of those is, are historical trends. Online services have increased by $100, and I recognize that we may be making big changes to that uh, line item. So we may do another star next to that one, revisit it. Postage, postage goes up. I'm going to increase that by $1,000. Copier supplies, I've increased that for by $100. And that's mainly for toner, not for paper. And I'm reducing, I'm eliminating the fax supply line as that program is no longer used. Uh, and I think the equipment purchase I increased by $60. Um, the next one is 198, which is the scene, uh, North, Hadley North Hadley Village Hall. The total there is 20,300. Uh, our RFP to sell the property includes provisions for us to maintain a presence in that property for at least one year. Does It's not the only outcome that's a, uh, possible. We may want to visit this budget again after April 4th when we, the bids have come in. Uh, and uh, you may want to eliminate this budget altogether or to greatly reduce it. So if there's an area of the budget where you might want to consider uh, reducing, um, keep bearing in mind what the results of the RFP are. This is one area that you could do it. So we just uh, let's set a quick North Haley Hall update. Two, three people have taken out the... That's right. Good. Okay. Any other interest? Any... Do you have an alarm systems on Town Hall? Is that fire and security or just fire? Uh, we're on 196 uh, 5233. Yeah. That is uh, that is the fire alarm system. Does it work in here or not? Yes, it does. And where are we with the fire alarm systems? It doesn't work at the highway garage. It doesn't work at the wastewater plant. You were supposed to get all of these together with Mike two years ago now. Where are we at with it? I'll check in with Mike. Okay. So, go on ahead. Okay, one, one ninety eight, which is North Hadley Village Hall. We already talked about that. Uh, one ninety nine. This we should talk a little bit more about this. When I prepared this budget in January, we had shuttered the building and we had uh, removed the tenants. So, I'd reduce this uh, budget and uh, down to the bare bones. We now have the possibility of having another tenant come back into that building on a temporary basis in association with the Route 9 widening project. The construction company is looking for a place to have their office. They're not interested in having the traditional mobile trailers, and so they've approached us to see if they, we could um, upgrade 500 square feet of, uh, North, of uh, Russell School in order to accommodate them for the term of the project, which would be about one year. Uh, we obviously would have to go out to bid. That's a procurement issue. Um, but we would have to increase this budget uh, in order to, well, there are two th possibilities. We can increase this budget in order to accommodate a tenant, or we can reconstitute the revolving fund like we had before uh, with, Russell's, uh, yeah, with Russell School and use the proceeds in order to pay for the utilities and the upgrade. Well, they actually, they haven't bid the project yet, have they? Have they bid the project? Yes, and the notice to proceed is expected to go out very shortly. So what's the number for office rental? Uh, I don't have that, uh, but looking at the um, looking at the square footage price in the area and for the term of the contract, we're talking about $72,000. For one year? For one year. So I guess we should really look and see how much it would be to fix it up for a year. Mm -hmm. So this is a budget that we should uh, 
uh, revisit or else we should uh, amend the revolving account uh, in order to accommodate the, the tenant. They, they are also looking at other uh, properties so they may decide that they can get a better deal elsewhere. What better deal is in this downtown of Hadley next yeah, to the Donut Man? Location, <laughs> location, location. Um, just one thing, just the general terms on the maintenance budgets. When um, I was at the Municipal Building Committee meeting last night and we had talked about um, discussing with them the, the need for us to have um, kind of a, a list from them as to what they might want to spend any sort of maintenance dollars on mm -hmm. uh, upkeep. And one of the things that came up was they were asking about the status <coughs> of the building maintenance budgets right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'll likely be hearing from okay. them, you know, just asking for information because they have some things they want to make sure that they're not double double counting mm -hmm. or assuming that something's in a budget that's not there. Okay. So. Do you have to work with them on that uh, the maintenance budget for these buildings is budget number 490? Mm -hmm. And uh, the original request was to increase that by $2,000. I removed any kind of maintenance on North Hadley Village Hall. So uh, well, I think the net impact was about uh, minus $5,000 on that budget overall. Mm -hmm. So uh, how's the DPW? New director hand, getting a handle. Is he doing okay getting a handle on all this stuff? Is he getting up to speed? Yes, uh, we had a conversation today. He's looking at his budget in terms of expenses. No secret that Chamorro uh, Lane and the water main break at the early part of the year put us back in terms of expenses. So he's he's concerned about making it to the end. He and I are going to sit down, and go over his budgets, and make sure that uh, we have a plan moving forward. Uh, he has about 77% of his budget uh, in highway spent at this point. Uh, his main concern is getting his hands around the Route 9 project, and so we've been working with Mass DOT in order to get uh, construction meetings up and so that we uh, know what the expenses are. We're also talking to our engineer about the kinds of uh, costs that they anticipate that we may experience in this uh, this project and the, the costs have drift, drifted north of what we were told, so we're studying those right now. For the waterline project? The waterline project on Route 9. It would be good that he starts getting in the building world too. Yep. Yeah. So just find out where he's, how he's doing with that. Mm -hmm. um, before we go to any, that's everything for that budget? That's the select board's budget. Okay. So is there any questions from the audience? They're writing a lot down. Maybe they have a question? No? Okay. All right, so do we want to, do we have no other unit information on the town warrant? Let me bring it up. So the uh, Finance Committee met briefly uh, on the warrant. They spent a lot of time with the DPW director. Uh, Molly was there for that. Uh, and the building inspector, they, uh, they didn't take any action on the, on the warrant. Uh, so we still have these, uh, uh, all this still to do with them. And just running through it very quickly. Is there an update from the Municipal Building Committee on their five articles? Molly? I don't think so. Okay. No, they didn't. Um, Not officially. Yeah. Okay. All right, the library is uh, still working on their projects. Uh, we just approved the solar uh, pilot. <coughs> uh, the quorum and the uh, moving the town meeting to sun Saturdays, those are two issues. That we had talked about last time. Um, unfortunately, Mr. West, the moderator, can't be here because of family issue. Uh, we can talk about the, those two articles, or we can defer them to another time. But we wanted to wait for. I think we defer. Right. Yeah. We got two more 
meetings this month? Yeah. Mm -hmm. CPA is meeting on uh, Monday in order to flesh out their articles. Right now, the only ones that they've approved are the administrative article and the $9,600 for Lake, uh, Lake Warner. Uh, pending is the uh, Zaturka Field article and the uh, ball, field. ball field one. Okay. Did we get any feedback from that at all? Any verbiage come back? I had a, I had a uh, verbal conversation with the chair of the committee. They were concerned about the lateness of the request. Uh, and uh, Chair of the CPA? Yes, okay. chair of the CPA. So they're concerned about the lateness of the request, and okay. so uh, it's likely that will be deferred until fall. And Ms. Turco, Park. So Turka, they had a lot of questions, including whether we actually own the property or not. We do. Uh, and <laughs> That's so a place to start. That would have solved a lot of problems if you didn't own it. <laughs> For sure. Uh, so that's very much on hold. They're they're still debating that one. Okay. All right. Six thirty meeting. Twenty-eight. Forty-five. Seven forty-five. We're ahead of schedule. <laughs> so. Bam. <laughs> So do we have any, so we, we've gone through all that. Is there anything else we want to talk about with the budgets and the, and the warrant right now? Not really. So we, we actually, so something with the warrants is we did send, send out the information to the different committees we talked about, about providing people to be on the reviews right. for the RFPs and RFQ. Right, I haven't heard back from anybody yet. Uh, we have had a lot of interest in the OPM uh, RFP. I uh, sent out 15 at least uh, document packages uh, just today alone. So um, we do have responses from the senior center about who would like to be. Okay. So I think that was sent to all of us, wasn't it? I got it. I think they sent to every. I'm the liaison, so I might have got that one. So why don't you make sure it gets forwarded? Oh, I saw it too. Yeah, well, make sure you get it. I don't think I saw you saw that. Oh yeah, they all want to help. So. All right, good. So we have lots I have of a ten o'clock meeting on Monday with council members. Okay. Okay. Um, Did anybody go to the finance committee meeting Saturday? Yeah. 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 I just I went for um, Marlo's presentation, so I didn't stay for uh, the inspector's portion of it. Yeah, those, they're, they're, di they're digging in, uh, they're doing a lot of good work, uh, things, things are moving along there. So I did realize after we talked about the committee for the uh, OPM and for the building committee, we kind of left out HPAT. So if HPAT wanted to have some one of their committee members wanted to be on the review for the OPM or okay. the review for the building, mm -hmm. that would be a, a good thing. And I think, have I forgotten? And the only other thing is people who use, I mean, do we want to offer up, I mean, we already asked, we already told the uh, Storehold Commission, but planning board is in there. Do they want to have a say, a member on the committee as well? Um, so those are the only, I couldn't think of anybody else who uses the building because my brain was short yesterday, or been Last short. Week. So is there anybody else we need to think about asking? Um, what are we doing with Park and Rec? I mean, is Park and Rec, we already told them we wanted a member for the okay. OPM and yeah. for the building. Yeah. Um, so, planning board would be, be the only other group and maybe what we might want to invite to send a member to join if they wanted to. Uh -huh. yeah. This board of health here, right? Board of board health meets here. Right. HPAT has offices and they meet over in the, in the senior center, mm -hmm. correct? Your, yes. Your, 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 your committee your, meets in the cell. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I think that would be the only other thing we should probably do with that part. Okay. And, um, you want conservation as well? Well, conservation meet here. is here, right? They meet right. here. Okay. Although, maybe a lot of people may want to jump to the new building, so. Okay. All right, so we're still, any announcements? We'll do announcements now because we're still waiting for our 745 time period to show up. I have one. Go ahead. A little, a little lengthy, not a lengthy one, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to read it. I uh, 
received a letter from uh, Superintendent uh, McKenzie. Uh, Dear Joyce, I'm writing to publicly acknowledge the support of that the Hadley Police and Fire Departments provide to our school district. Both Chief Spankenable and Chief Mason and their staffs have been instrumental in improving student safety and school security. They are quick to share best practice, offer suggestions and recommendations on how we can improve security and safety, and never hesitate to offer resources to support our emergency preparedness and emergency management efforts. Chief Mason and Chief Spankenable have worked with our school-based crisis teams and have offered to facilitate professional development to our staff and emergency response protocols. They have offered to assist us in preparing an evacuation and reunification drill for both campuses in the spring. Whenever the chiefs, members of the Hadley Police Department or members of the Hadley Fire Department enter our buildings, students are generally pleased to see them. Our police officers and firefighters are approachable and friendly and have demonstrated excellent skills in interacting with students with varying learning and de developmental abilities. We are fortunate to have such professionals and caring people leading our public safety department and to have officers who clearly care about our students and their safety and welfare. I believe it is important to recognize and acknowledge excellent work. I would like to personally express my gratitude and appreciation for all that our police and fire departments do on behalf of our schools. You're here. Thanks. Thank Good you. Job. Thank you very much. Any other announcements? Yeah. I'd like to congratulate the boys basketball team for going as far as they as they did. It was a great game to listen to. I had listened to it on the on the radio. It's a, a barn burner. Too bad they lost, but they certainly put their hearts into the game. Congratulations to the boys, the coaches, and to the cheerleaders. They made Hadley proud. And I'm very proud to say we're part of that or that the team was part of Hadley. Congratulations, guys. Here, here. Anything else? Well, it's magically 7.45, and Mr. O'Rourke is here to talk to us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, let me give out my card to everyone in case someone has a question. Uh, I'm chairman of the board of selectmen in Conway, and we went through a similar process with our budget uh, this past St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's to you, Mr. Sure, thank you. So David tells me you want to talk about aggregation. Okay. Go ahead. It actually uh, came up earlier in the meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, you know, I can I can start out by saying that, uh, you know, certainly um, it's disappointing that what you went through with uh, the last uh, aggregator you were with. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, that they didn't follow through. Uh, we put our plans through the DPU, 24 plans uh, in an average time of 73 days. Uh, we listened to what they wanted. We tweaked the plans the way they wanted. We did revisions when they asked. We were back to them within 24 hours and uh, everything ran very smoothly. So we have 24 communities with 215,000 households, 550,000 residents in aggregation right now. Uh, we're uh, about 1.8 cents below the Eversource rate and uh, three and a half cents below the uh, national grid rate. We presently have another uh, almost 20 towns who are interested in coming into the next aggregation. Uh, that will most probably be over 200,000 households. Uh, so certainly if, if you're interested in moving forward, uh, we would be the people to talk to on that. So when we talk aggregation, we're talking about individuals in town who can personally join this group. It is anyone in town who is on the basic service of um, the local utility, which for you is Eversource. Okay. Um, anybody, any business or residents in town is in the program unless they want to opt out. Anyone who has gone with a competitive supplier is not contacted by the aggregation. Uh, if at the end of their contract with their current competitive supplier they want to come into the aggregation, they can do that. Okay. So that, and, and there's an opt out, there's an initial opt out period under the aggregation law of 30 days, that's a formal period. 
Uh, if after that they want to opt out at any time, it's, it's done without penalty. Can we back up and start from point one and just say what it is that you're talking about exactly? You're talking about a mass purchasing of electricity by the individual homeowners and businesses in the town mm -hmm. and a savings plan available to them by purchasing and going with your program. That's correct. Okay. Yes. I know you probably have been through all the basics, so I didn't want to start from the very beginning. But essentially, that's that's the plan. It it's gives gives the consumers uh, uh, more choice. Uh, it gives them a reduced rate. Uh, the towns that we're dealing with now pick a uh, a term of two years, so that stays steady for two years. There's also more green energy options. If the town is, is interested in uh, adding green energy to what is already in the RPS requirement, which this year is 11% green, okay, uh, you can add to that um, with a variety of different green energies. Okay. So, so, this is, so the town signs up for this? The, the and, and then each individual has the opportunity to opt out. But we, but we would theoretically vote to say, yes, we want to participate. And then the residents can take their own course of action from there. Right. The way the law was written originally, uh, and, and again, Massachusetts was the first state to pass a municipal aggregation law. Uh, and that was written by Stan Rosenberg. Uh, and the, the rationale behind the law was that the, the best organizing facility within any municipality is the, is the municipal government. So that's the organizing force. Um, and uh, aside from that, uh, the rationale was that the best way to get the largest buying group was for an opt-out program. So those two functions are in the law. The, the municipal officials uh, pass um, on aggregation, everybody in town who's on the basic service is in the program unless they want to opt out, and again, they can opt out at any time. Um, every law written in every other state, the other five right now that, that uh, allow aggregation is based on the municipal aggregation law of Massachusetts. So everybody is, has an opt out program. What is the Mass General Law number on it? It's, uh, it's 164. Section 134A. Does this have to be passed at town meeting? You've already taken your town meeting vote back in 2005 on this issue. So. Oh, so that gives us the liberty to go with this company? Because that wasn't specific to the top. That was right. Right. It was, it was an authorization to the select board uh, to uh, pursue municipal application for residential customers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then the next steps are what are outlined in this memo, right? If we actually decide to do this? We sign the service agreement. Uh, we have that vetted by our attorneys. How, is that percentage the same for the people who have already put solar panels on their house and reduced their rates? Is, is what, what percentage? The, the, the rate they get? The rate, yes, yes. yes. Of okay. course, if they, if they have solar panels, they'll use obviously less of that electricity. Uh, but yes, the rate's the same. So we negotiate a service agreement. Uh, we implement the plan. Uh, right now, the, the, the town government already aggregates its electricity. We've saved tens of thousands of dollars just on that component alone over the years. Uh, this is something that other communities do. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to give the homeowner uh, a break on their electricity bill, uh, which they can accept or they can opt out if they wish. I think there's a 30-day notice period that, do you want to describe that uh, process? Initially in the law, there's a 30-day opt-out period where the residents are sent a letter that describes uh, what the rates are for the, for the competitive supplier as opposed to the, the local utility. Um, what they can do is either stay in the program by not doing anything or sending in a, a postcard that they sign to opt out. 
Uh, again, anyone who has already gone with a competitive supplier is not contacted. All <coughs> those on basic service. That's the initial 30-day period. Uh, however, after that, what, what we do, we allow people to opt out at any time without penalty throughout the, the term of the, of the, loan, of the uh, contract. What is the so term of the contract? It's, it's up to the town. Normally? Uh, we, we have, uh, well, in our last bid, we had a, a range of options from 12, 18, 24. Um, we, didn't, we didn't go up to 30 months, but it, sometimes we might do that. And then again, the town picks the term. We had one town uh, where we had a special amount of green in their, their program. They went for a one-year contract. The other 23 towns went for two years. So basically, every two years, you might have to re we have to renew this agreement again? Uh, you just go out to bid. Just go out to bid again. And, and we do all of that. So it's just a matter of rebidding after, after each. Uh, term. So the term of our agreement with you is actually longer than two years. Uh, it yeah, basically. Yeah. But each household has a two-year window. That's the normal agreement period, and then you, re you get an, like an open enrollment when you get prices again, or you just opt out when you're ready. What happens at the end of that period is they go through another 30-day opt-out period. Okay. So it's it goes through the same process at each at each uh, at juncture. So if they were to terminate with the aggregate after 18 months, say, would they have to notify Eversource to pick them up again? Or is that something that automatically happens? That, that's done between the competitive supplier and the local utility. So if, if one, of, one of the residents said, boy, after 18 months, I, I want to get out, uh, we have a number, an 800 number they call, which is customer service. Uh, they say, hey, I'm, I'm John Jones, I live at such and such street, here's my account number, I want to be switched back. At the next meter read, they're switched back. Gilbert, when, um, I don't remember when it was, a month ago, a month and a half ago, when Todd Ford came in, he had a gentleman with him that was also um, representing an aggregate, right, from, right, the guy from the CAG, but then because that didn't work out, he had somebody else with him that also was talking. Is that the same? That's colonial power. Colon yeah. Is that the same as what we're talking about here, or is that a different arrangement? It's, uh, it's the same kind of arrangement governed by the same law. It's a different company. So if we were going in that direction, we would be theoretically looking at one or the other? Right. But colonial or something else. Yeah. Good energy or colonial power. Yeah. Has colonial power talked to us again lately? Not lately. <laughs> so then our choices right now is whether or not we want to take their draft or their in the draft service agreement and have it reviewed and see if we like it or not. Mm -hmm. I also and, and again, our, our, our service agreement has been vetted by many, many town councils. <laughs> and it's a very, very friendly agreement. The, 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 our town council has seen this one before. Uh, yours, yours is Rick. Rick. Rick, Rick Holland. Yes, yes, we have. This is a special one for Rick. <laughs> well, then you're out of the picture. <laughs> Uh, Mr. So O'Rourke, at, at, when this gets done, I mean, you know, I, I'm a skeptic by, by choice, I guess, but, sure. you know, at the municipality and the people in the municipality, we would like to believe everybody watches this on TV, but that's not exactly the way it happens. How is that communicated uh, to the rest of the public? Is Do you bring, put newspaper articles out there and then send out information via the mail and ask them to contact uh, our town hall regarding any questions they may have regarding that? How does that progress? One, one of the most important um, elements of this program is public awareness and, and outreach and education. Uh, we go through a very extensive uh, communications program um, with the town. Um, we have um, videotapes that they can view. We have uh, Q&A on the website. Uh, we set up a website for people to come to. We have numbers to call. I give them my, my cell phone number for people to call. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important part of, part of the program because people have to know what's going on so that they just don't get a letter in the mail saying, oh, this is what's going to happen. They're well informed before that. We come to talk to senior citizens. We come to any committee that wants to talk to us. We've been to Rotary Clubs, Kiwanis Clubs, 
uh, just about anything, Knights of Columbus, just about anything you can think of that people want to come to and, and get information. And as I said, it's, it's a very, very important part of the program. Because what that does, it keeps people from calling your municipal officials. Okay, That's our job is to keep uh, the work off of your back and onto our back. And the rate is, is, it's a fluctuating rate so that if the energy costs go down, the cost to the receivers goes down as well. It's, you're not predicated on the rate at the, yes, that no, Eversource charges, you're predicated on? It's a fixed rate. Okay. Throughout the, throughout the program. And if the cost to the suppliers goes down and therefore the rates go down, do the um, receivers of the uh, energy, does their rate go down? As well, or is it a fixed rate that it's a, never moves up, it's never a moves down? Fixed rate for the for the entire program, so you don't have that up and down every six months with the utilities. It's a fixed rate. So, if it, so if something happens and power does power costs do drop, and you're at that fixed rate, you stay at that higher rate. Is what you're saying? Uh, you would. However, we can negotiate a rate that that is going to be over the course of a year is going to be better than the, the average of the fluctuation of the local utility. How do you do that? Uh, we do that because it's more competitive. No, but how, how would you project that to the, to the receivers of, the, of your program? Well, in, in the letter we send them, okay, when after the bid, if we get the competitive bid and it's compared with the, um, uh, the local utility rate, they, yeah. will, they will see the difference and we will explain that, that we're looking over, over the the course of a year, because you will have some fluctuation in those periods, but over the course of the year, they'll save money on those rates. So they kind of take kind of take the average, similar to what they do with the solar panels, and then they whatever the deduction of the rate is of the solar panels on, on the particular house, then it's calculated that way. So that's basically what you're doing. At your one percent or one and a half percent, one point eight, one point eight percent below. One point eight cents below. Yeah. All right, Mr. Nixon. So we have a fixed rate uh, contract with the Hampshire Council of Governments for our municipal accounts. That would be unaffected by this particular program. We have a net metering credit program for seventy percent of our power supply. That also would be unaffected by this program. Uh, our commercial uh, enterprises out there are not on the basic rate, so they have already worked out their competitive electricity uh, agreements, and that would also not be affected by this program. But I think you and I talked about the possibility of, of uh, opting in if, if they wanted to uh, for a certain, uh, for particularly for agricultural businesses. That, yes, yeah, that could be. Uh, although there are certain instances where we can get them a lower rate by negotiating just for them, mm -hmm. okay, uh, because they're in a different class, okay. So it de it depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. So in reality, we're sitting here trying to decide whether we want to negotiate a franchise agreement with you now to provide electricity to good, everybody in town. Good example. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, what was our view on this? <laughs> Let's take it under advisement. I mean, I think it makes sense to enter into an aggregation program, but I just want to make sure that we fully vetted everything. Okay, so we're Correct. okay with sending the agreement to our council, mm -hmm. letting them look it over? Absolutely. Yeah. And then getting some opinion from them? Oh, yeah, I've had several people inquire about when are, when are they going to be able to uh, buy into a program yeah. okay. as a private citizen? And we have, we have had another company in here. Do we need to go out to bid for it? For which company are Does we Does this talking? fall under procurement? The Colonial Power yeah. we were just talking about. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it's it's, it's 30 be exempt. Yeah, so we, whoever we you want to choose. You, you, you actually already been through this whole process except that your plan didn't go through. So now you sort of want to take it from that situation and make it better. Do we have any idea what the average bill is? And Hadley, I assume you did some research on this and you understand that. What, what are we talking about to the average taxpayer's bill? Uh, in, it, basically in Massachusetts, the average bill they claim 
is 7350 a year in terms of, of kilowatt hours. I, I haven't been anywhere close to that, but that's a that's year. What they claim okay. A year. Okay. Yeah. That's basically a little over 600 kilowatt hours a month. So that that's the average. Seems like a lot. Seventy-three fifty-eight. You said seventy-three fifty. I just got mine. I have an issue with per January. Year. That's right. as, as the average yeah. across the whole state. I, I think you know. Obviously, that that includes wood. smaller housing units. Out here, it's it's probably it's probably closer to to nine thousand a year. Any other discussion from the? So I think we should take it under advisement and send it to the lawyer. Mm -hmm. All right. And then do we want to tell Colonial? I want to say the life insurance company. <laughs> I'll um, talk. I'll talk to Colonial Power. All right. That's uh, basically one hundred and eighty dollars a year, though, right? It's what you're talking about at nine thousand kilowatt hours a year. Um, we we like to estimate somewhere between a hundred and a hundred and fifty. Okay, as a, as a range. For the savings potential. Yeah. Okay. Any comments from the audience? Uh, just a quick one. Let me apologize first. I still haven't figured out how to be in two places at once yet, but that's the reason why I'm late. I do have a couple of questions of him being coming in late. Uh, did you quote them a rate, what it would be? A, a rate for? For electricity what? right now. Uh, <coughs> the last aggregation we did we, we got a rate for one year of 8.8 .8 and for two years of 9.49. Okay. I'm holding it in front of me. I know a lot about electricity. When I was elected official from Belchertown, I served on the aggregation committee in the Hampshire Council of Government. Right in front of me right now I have anybody in Hadley can opt to go to Constellation right now. And I can read you what the thing is. Right now, Eversource is charging 10.43 a kilowatt hour. If you want to switch to Constellation right now, you can get locked in for two years. You can opt out anytime you want and go back to Eversource anytime you want. And they will guarantee a rate of 9.99 for two years. That's available to us right now, every citizen in the town of Hadley. Right. So I think it's a waste of time even talking to this gentleman. So there's other programs as well as that program that are available to people at this time. So, so this has been brought up. We'll look into it. And if we think it's doable, we'll actually keep going moving forward with this. It, 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 interesting that you're, you've been part of the Hampshire Council. At one uh -huh. time, yes. So um, I think we're done. We're, we're, uh, we're okay with this, okay? Gentlemen, All right. have a good night, ladies. Thank you. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day. And you too. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Thank Rourke. you for your information. Yep. All right. So um, we are now, we have granted Bridget her wish. Oh, an early meeting. <laughs> so motion to adjourn. Wish to record. finalize this. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Third. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody, and see you next week. We'll see you next week, and Bridget, good luck. Good luck, Tony.